l'aspettavano così? Perché credo in quello che dico. Questo è basta? Sì. Giussani ha generato un popolo e io faccio parte di questo popolo. L'avvenimento in cui Dio entra nella nostra esistenza e tutti colpiti da una curiosità sospendono per un istante l'ora e guardano dalla parte dove viene il dito. aspettavano così perché credo in quello che dico questo e basta? sì Don Giussani ha generato un popolo e io faccio parte di questo popolo l'avvenimento in cui Dio entra nella nostra esistenza Sospendono per un istante l'ora e guardano dalla parte dove viene il grido. civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. Aspettate ad applaudire. Wait, wait for applauding because we haven't said anything yet. Welcome, welcome to this session at the meeting for friendship amongst people. This is a tribute to Father Luigi Giussani. His life and his testimony is are essential for the meeting, and without him, the meeting wouldn't exist. This session is going to be a dialogue around the publication of an anthology of texts by Father Giussani, entitled At the Roots of a Story, Alle Radici di una Storia, published by Rizzoli, the publishing house that uh, since 1993 has been always publishing the works by Father Giussani. And this session was organized as a tribute to one of the most significant authors in their portfolio. 
Father Giussani lived Christianity and uh, testified it, and his testimony has been important for everybody. <clears throat> those close and those far from the church, even those who were uninterested in faith, found a challenging proposal with uh, plenty of meaning. Father Giussani died in uh, 2005, but today he still has something to say. His testimony, his uh, life proposal today is still able to reach for the men and the women of our time, the time of uncertainty, and it is still able to give a contribution to the journey, more or less difficult journey, of everyone. This testimony is still able to help and to support the generation of a human subject that uh, has to stand before daily challenges and to offer contribution to the social public experience of the Church. Well, today we are going to discuss this with three colleagues. One is Massimo Tuketa, who is connected online from abroad, general manager and publisher of Rizzoli. And we have to thank him for this book. Good afternoon and thank you. To connect with us, he had to hire to rent a Congress Center because it was the only place where he could get a, a good connection, a safe connection. We're not going to reimburse him, though. Then next to me is uh, Father Luigi Maria Picocco, a priest. La tua fame. Your fame has come before you. He is a priest, theologian, and writer. He was appointed by Pope Francis, spiritual assistant of the Dicastery for Communication, and he is a columnist of Osservatore Romano. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks to you. E infine il Presidente. And finally, the President of the Fraternity of Communion and Liberation, Mr. Davide Prosperi. Before opening the session, I would like to say hello to Lorenzo della Burchi, who is in this room with us. I would like to thank him because over the last few weeks he had to uh, do really impossible things. The first was to publish the first of three volumes of scientific studies on the thought of uh, the Giussani on time for the presentation that was held here at the meeting on Sunday evening. And the second thing, impossible thing that he managed to do was to uh, managed to publish on time for the meeting again the book by Davide Perillo about Rose and uh, his women of Kampala. So thank you, thank you very much, and welcome to you too. Uh, I was really struck by the fact that uh, the essay editor of Ritoli, Emanuela Gagliati, who edited and curated a selection of texts of uh, Father Giussani that are included in the book that has just been published, decided to uh, include as the first text an excerpt in which uh, Father Giussani narrates how everything started in his life. The text is entitled The Beautiful Day, and I would like to read a few lines of that as they seem to be really appropriate to introduce the session and to listen then to our guests. For me, everything happened as a surprise in a beautiful day. 
when a school teacher in high school, I was 15 years old, read and explained the first page of St. John's uh, Gospel. The verb was made flesh. That is, everything was made flesh. And so beauty was made flesh, and goodness was made flesh, and justice was made flesh, and love and life and truth was made flesh. And uh, being is not in a platonic hyper-uranium. It has made flesh. It has been made flesh and is one amongst us. In that moment, continues Giussani, I remembered a poem by Leopardi when, that I studied before, and it was entitled To His Lady. It was a hymn, a hymn, not to one of his lovers, but to the discovery that all of a sudden he made that what he was looking for in his loved woman was something beyond her. In that moment, I thought that Leopardi had been 1,800 years later a repetition of uh, the event that had already taken place in St. John's Gospel. There you have, exclaims Father Giussani, you got everything there because my life has been literally invested by all this. That instant, that moment since then has never been anything banal for me. So everything that was, everything that was beautiful and attractive and interesting and possible was something where I could find in that message the reason for being as a certainty of presence and hope that can mobilize and that everything could be embraced. Such a discovery will never abandon Father Giussani. And what is this discovery about? It is the greatness of Christian faith with no other comparison with other positions. It is this. Christ has answered, has responded to the human question. That is why those who accept faith and live it and those who do not have faith have a common journey, have a common destiny. And those who do not have faith get drowned in the question, get despaired in the question, they suffer in the question. This is the origin of the profound passion for the person, whoever they are and whatever their condition might be that Father Giussani had. The faith in Christ made him passionate for those drowning and getting desperate and suffering in the question because his strength, the strength of Father Giussani, lied in the awareness of having been grasped forever by another one with a capital A. And it was the, his dependence of the life, on the life of Christ who made him write when he was 24 years old, the greatest joy in the life of a person is that of feeling Christ alive and rejoicing in the flesh of their thought and their heart. Alive and moving, something present, not as a memory of the past. That is why he spent all his life to communicate it through a great gesture of, of charity that uh, was devoting his life to educating people, an education that could make everybody able to stand in their reality and have a protagonist role. Even the young guy that at the meeting of Rimini just tidies up the rooms. And that's why in the mid-50s he wanted to show 
the relevance of faith to life, the utility of faith to life, the reality for everyone. And he said, the first day in school, I'm not here to say things that you will think that you own, but uh, to teach you a method to verify whether the things you are told are true. There is esteem in the person, in the reason, in the heart of the other to provide them with an assessment tool. This is a way to verify facts for fact checking and is to avoid a comparison with what you read, what you find, what you feel, and you want to do that with your heart. That's what he calls the elementary experience, something that is objective and that is inside each and every one of us. And how does he describe it? It is a complex of needs and evidence with which people are projected into a dialogue with whatever exists. Many names may be applied to this, but uh, we can summarize it with some phrases, such as the need for truth, the need for happiness, the need for justice, etc. This is what uh, has made uh, Don Giussani, Father Giussani, a protagonist, because for him, faith and the encounter with Christ didn't really mean the end of his adventure. Quite the contrary, it puts a dramatic sense in his life, and uh, when he was nearly 20, he wrote, I don't want to live in a useless way. That's my obsession. And what is the utility of life for him? Life for people's happiness. He writes, now I do not cry, but for two reasons. When I think of the eternal unhappiness of people, and when I think of the eternal unhappiness, terrestrial unhappiness of the people that is similar to the eternal one, so that's a really endless passion for the person. And that's what led him to consider with sympathy everyone and everything. It was a constant dialogue with the heart of the men, of the women of the young people that he met without fearing the world. In fact, jumping into the world to the full, so much so that he was certain of what he had received. Well, I have taken too much time already, and I would like to give the floor to Massimo Turcheta, general manager of Rizzoli Publishing House, and that uh, has been publishing Father Giussani's work. In the publisher's notes that you wrote uh, at the beginning of the anthology that has just been published, we can read this. Father Giussani has been the greatest educator of the 20th century. Every text of his can get to the reader's heart. It disrupts uh, the usual thinking and it sparks a new light for knowledge. Can you tell us about why these texts have been selected and why a lay publishing house considers it useful to publish this work, the proposal by Don Giussani, his thoughts in this particular historical moment? In other words, what is the need that uh, this can respond to? Thank you. Thank you, Alberto. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm really glad to have the opportunity to be here, even though virtually today, to represent the publishing house Rizzoli and the whole Mondadori group in this very important event. Why 
did we decide that it was uh, so essential to talk about uh, the educational experience of uh, Father Dusan and why we wanted to talk about the main steps in his educational journey, which are uh, collected in this volume. We wanted it to be a, a, structure, a structured work. We talked about this in the past. I like to think that an educator has to take into account also the needs of those who do not have faith. There is, for instance, uh, an abstract on uh, the uh, fact that uh, the uh, eye is neglected. This lack of attention is the same that we uh, find in uh, old works. And uh, this constant attention to life, to being alive, not dead, this is a message that uh, was uh, constantly echoed by Father Dusani. Moreover, there is another element, another recurring element, which I believe is extremely important because we have uh, Don Luigi Maria Picocco, who in his latest book uh, talked about the themes of education. If I can quote uh, an author that, uh, well, whom I consider very important, the psychologist Hillman, who uh, during a conference he talked about a father, a Jewish father, who tells his child to go up a ladder and jump from the second step and he will catch him. And then again from the third step, the child jumps, the father catches him and the child is happy. And then the fourth and the fifth step. And then when he reaches the top of the stairs, the father doesn't catch the child and the child cries. cries. So uh, there is an aspect of anti-Semitism that can be only shared by Jewish. You cannot trust a Jewish person, not even if this person is your own father. And the second profound truth is that if you want to really grow up, you have to let go of the hand that has accompanied you since you were born. So we need to accompany and to let go. Let, by letting go, we let uh, the others grow. So this, uh, we talk about and then the uh, relationship with the uh, son and the trust he had in his son that uh, this, is way, this way of letting go is really a fundamental part of the teaching of a Father Dusani with the trust in men and women that makes it possible to um, let go and then wait for those who have let go to come back. I forgot the mic. I thought I had uh, the uh, headset with the integrated mic, but well, I don't. During the first months of the pandemic, you, when the situation was uh, really frightening, we were all confused, and uh, the Pope also said so saying that uh, we were uh, all uh, together in this confusion. You wrote that uh, we 
the main problem was not to survive the pandemic, but rather to understand that we cannot postpone the great question on the meaning of life that pand the pandemic was uh, putting in the, on the, for in the forefront. And uh, the Pope uh, talked often about this. For instance, he said, uh, the biggest threat is to lose the sense of living. So, with the, in your uh, uh, well, um, meeting uh, that you had with the Pope, I, uh, um, I ask you, what kind of contribution can Father Giussani give to try and find an answer to this enormous question on the meaning of life and what does this give you? Well, first of all, thank you. I'm really grateful because uh, I cannot, we cannot take for granted to be sitting in front of someone who's ready to listen to you, to what you have to say. So thank you for inviting me here today to share this moment with you. And uh, first of all, well, uh, I would like to say a few words as an introduction to my intervention. There is a gesture that uh, was always there for the church from the very beginning. When you want to meet someone, when you want to, to know more about someone, what we do is uh, talk to the people who really met this person. These are the, the witnesses, so to speak, that had a direct experience of an event or of a person. But the church, from the very beginning, when it tells us, tells us the story of Jesus, does not limit itself to the testimony of those who really met Jesus. We don't have only the uh, Gospels of Matthew and John, uh, who really experienced uh, Jesus, but we also have uh, Mark and uh, Luke, who never really met Jesus, if not occasionally, but they met him in his disciples, for instance, in his followers, and these testimonies are uh, thought to be real, even though they are not deriving from a direct encounter. So this is why I have uh, the courage to talk about Father Giussani, although I've never met him. I, I never shook his hand. I never heard his voice directly. But in a way, I met Father Giussani as uh, uh, Mark and Luke met Jesus by meeting his friends, the people that lived with him. So I hope that what I'm going to say today is true because, uh, well, sometimes you can listen to someone who is on the outside, so to speak, someone who has nothing to do with a certain person. But I would like uh, that my intervention was embraced into quotes from the gospel. When I was preparing my intervention for uh, today, I thought about uh, a few sentences uh, from the gospels by Joan. It is uh, night time. And Jesus meets Nicodemus, who is very similar to the contemporary man, someone who actually, uh, well, uh, makes a lot of questions, but uh, doesn't want to feel responsible for these questions. So Jesus tells him, the wind blows the way it likes, and you can uh, actually hear its voice but you can tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. 
Well, I think that uh, we all agree that when we think about uh, Father Giussani, we think about someone who was born from the Spirit, a man that uh, is the result of the experience of the Spirit. And uh, every time we try uh, to, let's say, limit the Spirit in some kind of container, well, we never manage to do that. Even our attempt to uh, actually um, find some limits or borders uh, to what uh, Father Giussani was, well, this is an attempt that is doomed to fail. It's not, imposs- it's not possible. We cannot find a way to tell everything, to say everything about this man, because this man has the freedom of uh, the spirit uh, that we don't know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is something that uh, always produces something new. So the um, life of uh, this man ends in 2005, but uh, the strength of his life continues to surprise us, to convert us to, to take us back to that fundamental truth that, that moved his life, which we in some ways would like to crystallize so that we think that uh, if we can uh, pass it on to the other, to the others, is to put it into some kind of formula. Well, this is uh, a testimony that freed Father Giussani as well as all the people that met him. So while well, this is true for me as well, when I was reading this volume, published by Rizzoli, this uh, uh, collection of uh, Father Giussani's uh, thoughts and reflections, I tried to, to, to see what the effect of Father Giussani was on my life. I can tell you this not just because I'm a priest, but because I have been baptized, because I, prof- I am profoundly Christian. So there is something that uh, is quite clear when you read uh, Father Giussani's works. When we read his works, you don't read about abstract reasoning. You always have the feeling that Father Giussani is talking to someone when he's writing as if he was looking someone in the eyes, as if he was uh, talking to someone. So this is not uh, so uh, um, self-evident because uh, the church often, in a way, lost itself in abstract reflections that cannot involve people, as if this truth is heard through someone else. When you read Father Giussani, you read of a man who says, while I was studying theology, I felt the need to do more. I felt too removed. I needed to be among young young people. So uh, we need to keep in mind that we need to say something that is interesting using words that come from what you have listened by uh, listening to other people. So there is a priority in terms of uh, education that is listening to others. You cannot provide answers if you don't give others the time to ask questions. So this is the anxiety that we all uh, share and uh, the anxiety that uh, touches the church as a whole is to try and find an immediate answer. So in a way, this is uh, our lack of faith. When we run to an answer and longs to uh, have a prompt answer without giving enough space 
to the answer uh, to the question to the crisis uh, well that means that this answer is not something this person believes in allora so educating doesn't mean giving answers but uh, teaching people how to ask questions. So this is what I felt when I read uh, Giussani's works. So let's say, frankly, that Father Giussani was an extremist because it took the questions to their roots. What you ask yourselves, yourself needs to go back to its roots so that life can have a solid basis. On the contrary, we live in a world where uh, we have a way of thinking that is in a certain way based on uh, the effort to entertain. We no longer have uh, an action that helps people to go back to the roots of a question. What you were saying before about the pandemic is something that uh, I uh, deeply believe in. Sometimes we need to be faced by something horrible, a tragedy, to be forced to ask the questions of life in a radical way. Do we really need to face a tragedy in order to be deep, radical? What does it mean to be able to educate? We shouldn't be waiting for uh, something terrible. We should be ready to look deep into things in a decisive, radical way. So when you go to the roots of something, then you can build your own life on it. But if you do not reach the roots of the questions, Everything is very shaky. And I quote Father Dusani on this. He wrote, the uh, Christian word is the human word to which the, uh, its real object was revealed. This doesn't take anything away, but it reveals the truth of everything. Everything is revealed as a sign of himself. So this is something that is quite difficult to understand. But Father Giussani takes us to the third element I would like to share with you today, that is to say the need for a dialogue. My friends, we, well, dialogue is not a, a a trend, a fashion, a way of fashion. We don't want to, to be, so to speak, seductive towards uh, the others and the world, thinking that a certain kind of dialogue can help us achieve our goals. This is not what a dialogue is. A dialogue is to be convinced, as a Paul says, that everything has been done through and uh, Jesus Christ and for Jesus Christ. So there is nothing that has is linked with the culture of uh, man, of the uh, human experience that is not connected with Christ. So this is why we can actually have a dialogue because everything has been done through Christ and for Christ. So this is the foundation of the Christian dialogue. So we can uh, say with the certainty that we can understand that something that is good and that is hidden in the in the even what is evil people pos possessed by the devil so to speak uh, tell Jesus we know who you are you are the son of God and this is a in a way a, a statement of fa faith and not even uh, the devil can escape this comparison with Christ. So when we find the truth, we need, we have to 
do our best to, to um, expose it. So the dialogue is not a strategy. It is a profession of faith where believers are uh, ready to say that uh, the Christ is really the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, and this is evident when we read uh, Don Giussani's works. You don't need to agree with him, but it is interesting to see the light of something true through him. So there is the truth, and it is for this truth that it is worth living. Where was this man born? Sono applausi a Giussani questi. So this round of, of applause is for Father Giussani, not for me. Well, actually, uh, these are for you because, uh, well, you have uh, never met him, uh, but you're talking about uh, him the way you are. You said that at the beginning. Otherwise, we could have just a reading session of uh, Father Giussani's uh, works, but it would not speak to us the way it does today through your voice and your, uh, and your face, your expressions. Vedete amici, c'è una cosa che mi sta a cuore condividere con voi. There is something I would really like to share with you today. When Father Giussani talks about the church, when he talks, talks about relationships, there is something that really strikes me, strikes me. And I also feel that there is a, a danger, a risk, and I'll try to, to explain it in a simple way. When you read about Father Giussani's life, and we would like to thank Alberto for the biography he wrote, when you read about Father Giussani and what he did in his life, you realize that his encounter with Jesus Christ is like a gift is not uh, something that results from some kind of technique. It is a gift that happens in life as a traumatic event. And when I say traumatic, I mean that when this encounter takes place, this uh, encounter um, marks your life. Then there is a life before and a life after this encounter. So to be able to meet Christ in this way is a gift. It's not a, something that can be achieved through some technique or strategy. It's not enough to be friends, to uh, provoke, to create this encounter, because it is always an, an, a gift in the end. So this is the only thing we can actually do and this is the educational uh, um, element, is not to, to say if you meet me, then you meet Christ. Through relationships to friendship, we can reawaken in people the longing for this encounter so that they really pray the Lord for this encounter, asking for it. This is not a strategy. Therefore, we, I believe, are all beggars in a way, begging for this encounter, begging to meet something that can change their lives. And this, in a way, is the, 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 roots, the root of prayer. So if the church remembers that it can only reawaken this longing, that can lead people to wish for this encounter, which is a gift, which is not the result of, re of any reasoning, it is not the result of the repetition of uh, uh, events and things that were true at a certain t time in uh, history. We have to humbly go back to this wish and uh, reawaken the wish in the heart of people because uh, then it's not us that uh, 
respond to this uh, wish. It is uh, actually the grace, faith, hope, and charity are uh, theological virtues which we receive as a gift. So the life of Father Giussani is close to what we are living at this time in history. So uh, there is a, uh, some kind of prophecy in uh, one of the works of uh, Father Giussani, as if he wrote this text uh, this morning, not uh, years ago. The way he looks at reality and talks about reality talking about the young, about talking about uh, people, he says, there is a way to copy the mentality that is most widespread. So young people have problems in leading a convinced life, and he adds, in what we announce uh, to other people, on the one hand, we are abstract in uh, the relationship we have in ourselves, as if there was no affection. There is no affection left, as if uh, we had batteries that uh, just uh, last six minutes instead of six hours. So, on the other hand, and I'm still quoting Father Giussani, we seek shelter in friendship as if we were looking for some kind of protection. We uh, do not uh, interiorize what we see and what we hear. So this is the prophecy I see in Father Giussani's work. So, so the relationship of friendship and the church itself, they are not a cocoon, so to speak. They are rather something that propels us uh, forward. And this is something that can, shelter, that can shelter us in a way, but at the same time exposes us because we are part of someone and we are ready to face the open sea. So that's what Jesus told us. Take the open sea and this is why we are brave enough to do so. So this is something very powerful that can uh, make us uh, think and reflect, even if when the church simply creates and builds cocoons. So this is what uh, Pope Francis continues uh, is, uh, repeating, a church that is uh, uh, a way out. So uh, it is uh, the approach of someone who thinks that being part of the church makes them uh, able to reach what Pope Francis calls existential peripheries. Uh, Father Giussani actually created people that could do this geographically, culturally, spiritually. And how can we actually say on the open sea, if not by belonging to this? This is the question that Father Giussani asks. Is this our church? I know I have actually spoken too much. I would like to reach now the conclusion of my intervention. I was in a course of spiritual exercises for priests. We read uh, a few pages uh, by a great master who was a monk, uh, André Luf, a Trappist monk. He um, wrote and gave a description of Father Giussani, which I believe was uh, really beautiful. And to conclude my intervention, I will quote from this description. Of all the things that a father can give to his son, his word is probably one of the most essentials. essential. The word of a father uh, equals the gift of life. A mute father, a father who does not speak, cannot play his role 
in front of his son. It is not enough to give life. A father should also lead the life of his son, give sense to the life of his son. Otherwise, this life will never have a shape. It will be a mass of uh, unending possibilities. And in the end, these possibilities will never materialize because there uh, won't be a father that uh, can provide a name and an identity through his words. Every father regenerates his son through his word and sends him to dive in the adventure of life with trust. As I said uh, at the beginning, we can uh, say about Giussani what is said in the gospel about uh, John the Baptist. John didn't uh, do any miracle, but what he said about Jesus was true. And in that place, many believed in him. So. I think this is true also for Father Dusani, a father who offered the world the miracle to say something true about Jesus Christ, the only one for whom it is worthy to speak. Thank you. That's so good. You can already take note of the dates of next year's meeting of Rimini and then you will be free to choose the day when you will come back again. So thank you for giving us back Father Giussani alive and throbbing again. Non come il devoto It was not just a recollection by one of the few of many that had uh, were lucky enough to lucky enough to drink and eat with him but who could experience his mystery in the presence he had in the life of many of us and in the world but in particular for me your life has been a really incredible surprise with your story and the life that you are having thank you now davide well thank you and good evening everyone i would like to thank the organizers of the meeting for the invitation as we can see, this is giving us uh, the opportunity to go into greater details and go deeper into the heart of our very dear Father Giussani. As far as I'm concerned, what we have heard so far can make it easier for me in my task uh, this afternoon because many of the things that uh, I would like to uh, mention with other words, with the words arising from uh, everyone's experience, have already been mentioned through your experience. And uh, I have to say that uh, I can confirm what uh, Don Luigi said at the beginning, and now I'm going to say it again, but with my words, at the end of the day, the truth of a charisma or the evaluation of a charisma lies in the fact that uh, it has something to say not to the people connected to the person with the charisma, but to everyone. And I think that this is one of the great merits 
of this uh, selection. I would like to thank Mr. Turketa and uh, the publishing house Rizzoli for curating this anthology in the anniversary of the 100th years after the birth of Father Giustani, because it is an opportunity to spread the story of Father Giustani. And for those who already know the educational message and the passion of Don Giustani for uh, of a wider audience, indeed. This teaching has uh, nurtured many of us, and not just us, many believers and non-believers in the world. From this anthology, I uh, will also draw some of the quotes that I would like to present this afternoon. The first point I would like to mention is, is this. We can go through the titles of the texts that have been included in the anthology. And this has uh, generated further gratitude for the great gift that uh, the life and the testimony of Don Giussani have been for me. I'd like to quote some of them. The person is rebirth in an encounter. The, in the simplicity of my heart, I give in you, you everything, recognizing Christ. Uh, woman, do not cry. The courage to say I dear beauty, and so on and so forth. The passion for the person is not randomly the title, the theme of this meeting on the 100th anniversary of the birth of Giussani. And the passion for the person can be found in every single comma in these texts, in the encounter with the, the one who can make the person true, who can make the person accomplished. And so once again, a person that is passionate for reality and for the world, and this is Jesus of Nazareth. Every page, every line, every word in this volume delivers this great affection and emotion and faith that is loaded with reasons. This is a typical characteristic of the teaching and of the example of Giussani, a faith that is loaded with reasons that he puts in practice for what he himself defines as something that is outwardly, and I quote, the mystery, the infinite, for which every person aspires to, consciously or unconsciously, the infinite is with us. It is on the same boat where we are. And there is something that is outwardly, Giussani says, that is also inside freedom and that can recognize it. Page 218, 219. In this sense, the passion of uh, Father Giussani for communicating that beautiful day that was mentioned by Alberto in the opening this session and of which he made experience as that initial moment that was full of promise where everything was there already as an embryo that is uh, ready to develop. This experience has always been oriented to educating us to recognize Jesus as present in the unfolding of our life, his presence, and to say yes with our freedom, without disregarding anything, without any kind of censorship in our dramatic experience, even in our emptiness of things, because sometimes that is what we feel in moments uh, of our life that can be really empty. This is a kind of compassion 
a kind of piety. It is a passion. Who can remain indifferent before such a promise, such a sight full of hope, full of hope for life? And I believe that the educational greatness of Father Giussani is really evident here with his uh, throbbing heart that I will try to describe in my words and according to my experience. This is not uh, uh, an exaggeration, as it may sound, but for sure one may wonder why and how When, why and how can it make sense to have such a statement? As friends of Father Giussani, this fills us with joy, but we have to go deeper into the meaning of uh, such a statement. This is not just to highlight the uniqueness of it, but uh, it is to understand really in what sense he was an educator to us, to me, that I myself have to educate my children, my friends, myself. So Father Giussani was first and foremost not just this, but above all things an educator. And I would like to talk about this in particular, but not just this, as I said, as we all know very well, not only the people that uh, have known him personally, but it is really, really difficult to frame the figure of Father Giussani in one definition, in a noun, well, this is applicable to any person, but uh, in this particular case, Father Giussani was many, many different things. For sure, he had great knowledge of the person and great knowledge of Christ. He was also a great communicator of this knowledge. His uh, communicative skills were really, really unbelievable. He was a great orator. He was also a passionate listener and uh, interpreter or critical expert of music, a voracious reader of uh, many classical works, and a poet. Because at the end of the day, all his life was poetry and also a painter. Because with his words and his actions, he was able to paint in front of the observer or his interlocutor. He was able to paint before our sight horizons of life that were ever new, images that could make it understandable what often seems to lay far away or even uncomprehensible to ordinary mentality. But if I have to select a noun uh, that can describe him best, then anything is educator. So for Father Giussani, who is the educator? The educator is the one who, having encountered other persons, and you have already mentioned this before, and getting passionate about their present and about their future. This is also important. And it is the one who wants to help the other grow towards their destiny. So I would like to uh, insist on this because towards their destiny, it also means how they can be useful to the world. That's the question that we all ask. I could give 
many, many examples of this, even personal ones, but I'd rather use an image. Let's suppose that uh, one of uh, his uh, closest collaborators may be compared to a stream through a mountain that is almost flooding, that is full of water, and so the inhabitants of a village are worried, get worried, and talk to the engineer. And Father Giussani can be compared to this engineer that instead of getting worried about how to stop the strength of the water, was intelligent enough to build strong side banks and to install mills so that uh, the strength of nature could be transformed into energy that is useful for the entire community. And many uh, may say that uh, this is something that really happened with him. And as Cardinal Zuppi said, every reference to him is totally wanted. And uh, the life of Father Giussani was also characterized by a great capacity of uh, encountering people, meeting people, before dialogue was mentioned. In this case, we can think of the many friends involved with uh, him as responsible for the movement. We can compare this to uh, figures like a taxi driver or the other persons traveling on public transport, on an aircraft, or it could be a schoolmate at the university or in high school. But wherever he was, he never felt any other person as a stranger. In fact, he perceived the other as a gift that he would receive, and in this sense, as a responsibility. So it is not surprising that an event like the meeting got to 43 editions without really showing any kind of weaknesses. Because the meeting is coming from the same life source the encounter. And the many people that encountered him can really testify this. I had the chance to uh, meet Father Giussani and to talk to him personally for some years. So it is part of my experience. And this is the memory I have, just like many other people who were lucky enough to know him and to talk to him. Father Giussani would drink from the other persons as if he were a sponge. And uh, it could be a very important person or a very simple person. He would listen to the other as if they were the last person on earth. He would learn from them. In terms of uh, knowledge, in terms of observation capacity and feeling. He was really a great person, but you could feel that he was there to learn from you, even if you knew nothing. And he would uh, give an incredible amount of time to talking to people. And it is right for the reason behind the encounter with Christ that he had experienced, that he would open to public spaces and to uh, accept the other in listening to them and paying attention to recommendations and to suggestions. And he would never be uh, prescriptive, but uh, not even elusive. He wouldn't try to impose the other. He would try to open new ways towards the truth and towards their good. It was a sort of a joint attempt to understand. And in doing this, he was respecting the other's freedom. And so much so that the main aim, so to speak, 
was to awaken the re-education to being critical, to critical thinking. This is an important point for which I would like to quote um, a text from uh, one of uh, Father Dusani's works, that is The Risk of Education, because when I read it, it really made me think about present time. It is one of the main points about his educational proposal. First of all, proposing the past adequately, that is, the tradition proposed as a, an operational hypothesis. Second, the past presented within a lived present, a lived present that can emphasize the correspondence with the ultimate needs of the heart. And finally, the key point, true education must be education to critical thinking. This means that the past traditions and the reasons behind their reasons, their relevance in the present, at some point should be problematized. So with the help of a company, one can say yes or no, and in doing so, they get their shape of human beings. Consider how he kept humanity, the heart, and everyone's freedom in great esteem, and how we can feel this in these words. And then here is an observation that is still relevant today. We want to free young people from mental slavery and uh, from standardization that gets everyone slave of the other. Consider how topical these words are in the era of social networks, imperialism, so to say, especially for younger generations. And I won't dwell into this, but it would be really interesting to discuss this point too. But uh, I'd like to mention the point that I'm really interested in. So before being an educator, Fadi Jusani was a father and an authority. And I would like to elaborate on this. He was a father because he knew how to participate in that paternity that uh, is the one of Jesus with his creature. I don't know how many among us can experience paternity in this way, but for sure there was a sense of uh, responsibility and uh, liveliness uh, towards the other people that he was encountering. And then he was also an authority because he had the passion of seeing the other grow. It is from autoritas, from Latin, that means letting the other grow, helping the other grow, and eliminate any risk of possession and subjugation of the other. It is the other that has to grow, and this is the way that education can be assessed. And as every real educator, he wouldn't frame his interlocutor within a pre-made idea, a pattern. Every person was unique, and at the same time, he wanted the others to participate in something greater than his own experience, his own relationship. That is my experience. I was inserted into a greater vision, a greater company, a community of friends that was based in the initiative of God for the person, in a holy story in which everyone could be an unreplaceable actor. I hope that the things that uh, I am mentioning are not taken as a, a recipe for an educational proposal. This is a lived experience. The very text by Don Giussani that are included in this book are nothing but a reflection on that experience. I myself if I consider my personal experience and my professional background, 
I have to acknowledge that uh, what I am today has been strongly determined by my belonging, my membership to this company that has educated me with this uh, life conception, this notion of life and freedom and responsibility. Today, I am a bi uh, university professor in, of biochemistry, and if I want to grow professionally, I can organize a research team, and I can count on my collaborators and bet on them to obtain academic results and scientific results. And if I can do this today, undoubtedly, much of this, I, have to, I owe it to the education that I received. Um, paradoxically, right because the responsibility in our company has required time and commitment to me for many years that had to be spent following our communities that are scattered in Italy and around the world. And I would always, always be grateful for this. Thank you. In the book published by Rizzoli, there is a beautiful text by Giussani, and this is the excerpt. I am going to tell you something beautiful. The form of this presence, the presence of Jesus in life, he's talking about this, from which one starts to get to reality, to get to that presence, is a company. A company not as a, a set of feelings of one towards the others. Many times we renounce friendship for this. It is what we found, what we can find in its ontological value, that is of real accomplishment. It is company as a happening, as an event. Father Giussani indicated with fervor the journey indicated by Christ itself, himself, which is not a void of fatigue, but it is the only way until today and the only way to face the future is to have the certainty of a presence, the presence of a company. We are all people who responded to a presence. So the company itself becomes a real meeting, a real event for the others. It is a continuous event, a continuous happening. We have had so many testimonies of this in the meeting event itself. The second important aspect is that as a real educator, Father Giussani had the sense of what happened before and what would happen next. This is also important. He would never uh, anticipate any doctrine to be learned theoretically. He would always wait for the other with their life uh, to open to a certain journey that then he would also recommend and suggest. He, was, he would wait for you to make a discovery of it so that you were the first to become aware of that kind of journey. After all, his uh, educational spirit towards everyone's actions uh, were also was also evident in one uh, of his statements do not wait for a miracle but uh, for a journey for a path and uh, there is also another text that explains this the first aspect about freedom is acknowledging the uh, relationship of a sense of belonging to Christ. And the second interesting aspect and decisive aspect of freedom is the idea of following either the world or Christ. There is no alternative for him. Uh, if I have to think about how topical is the educational proposal of Father Giussani, this is possibly the most uh, significant challenging aspect and possibly the aspect that is that has been rejected the most it is the point that has been also mentioned by Pope Francis 
not long ago, as he said that education is the natural antidote to individualistic culture that sometimes degenerates uh, into a self cult and in the premise of indifference. And I quote Giussani again, talking about following today may sound particularly difficult. It is paradoxical, but understandable. It is an epoch in which the people have been induced to follow standardized behavior that has been made anonymous in the past. Everybody has been standardized, and so it is hard to manifest oneself with words in terms of the need of a real personality, the need not to adjust oneself. And here is a really provocative. What can one get uh, adjusted with uh, and consciously and learning more and more in a positive sense. It is by loving more and more with greater tenderness towards the one to whom we belong to, of course, Jesus Christ. And ed any educator know that uh, there are uh, positive and negative moments uh, in the life of a person. There are moments where one feels close and other moments where one feels uh, away, far away. So an educator is able to wait. They keep the door open. At the same time, they find the way to get closer through a phone call, a card, a word. But these ways are always unexpected and they are a proposals of a presence. So following, that is following Christ, and I quote again, overturns the situation and the sign of such overturning is that the present turns in fascinating, new. And uh, this reminded me of a recent editorial in Avenire when Cardinal Zuppi took office, who wrote, when we lowered the sky of our desires, limiting it to ourself, even the earth seems to have become stingy of having enthusiasm and satisfaction. The third aspect of uh, the teachings that uh, we can find uh, from uh, Giussani's experience is that an educator is not an angel and is not a perfect person. And so we can take a breath, take a breath now, and we can say that one can become educator also becoming aware of their own limits with humility and also acknowledging one's mistakes when one makes mistakes. How did Giussani have mentioned this many times, referring to himself? Paradoxically, the live conscience of his fragility made him so merciful and uh, careful towards other people's fragility. And uh, he himself has defined himself as a beggar. A real educator is a beggar of the accomplishment of his humanity in the humanity of his disciple, of the son or the friend. The accomplishment of one's humanity into the humanity of the son. I believe that this is the most profound sense of the word communion that uh, Father Giussani has talked thousands of people to live with. So I would like, allow me to conclude by mentioning a wish that he expressed to a young person at this report at page 246. To remain young, one has to be faithful to what one has been born for, that is to one's heart. But all the needs and all the words that are linked to them already have an answer in the vocabulary of power. So this is my wish for you and for myself. For this, join others who want to remain faithful to their heart. Be faithful to your heart and to your friends, and I can assure you that you can go very, very far. 
we have to admit that this is something that has no comparison, something that, like in Christianity, that we say that God has become a man. And that is why that being in a company is the way for remain young. Don't juice, you are right. There's nothing comparable like and nothing more fascinating like this. Thank you. Since it is quite late and after us, uh, the president of the Italian regions will have a meet in this, in this room. I will just be very short in thanking all that took part in this meeting. In the message of the Pope to the meeting, we read, men and women of our time have a profound need to meet people that do not uh, give uh, lessons uh, from their own balconies, but go down in the street and uh, share the uh, daily fatigue of living, uh, supported by hope. I believe that your contribution today has made the person of Father Giussani one of these people, and uh, uh, the uh, Virtual exhibition on Father Giussani includes uh, an intervention of uh, Father Caron, president of the Fraternity of uh, Communion and Liberation uh, from 2005 to 2021, who said in this particular historical moment when we are overwhelmed by uncertainty at all levels, finding significant uh, persons who can help us find our way is a, a precious gift. And this is why we are grateful to Father Giussani for the novelty he has introduced in our lives. And this is the reason why we have a deep desire to share this life, this discovery, with all the people we meet. With all our limits, we try to live that idea of church that is promoted, in a way, by Pope Francis. So the encounter that you had, Luigi, is revolves around one of the most important aspects of the life of Father Giussani. The Pope says it was very important for Father Giussani to experience these encounters, these meetings, not with ideas, but rather with people, with Jesus Christ. So this is how he educated everyone to freedom, leading us to our encounter to Christ, because it is Christ that gives us the real freedom. And is this is the most important response to the challenge of modernity that believes it is impossible that an unforeseeable encounter like the one you described could be the milestone in responding to our need for meaning. And I conclude uh, quoting again Father Giussani in terms of his uh, historical judgment and indication of the uh, journey, a path that everyone can follow, every one of us. The culture of today, Father Giussani wrote, thinks it is impossible to know ourselves and change ourselves or the reality we live in by following one person. A person in our time is not seen as a tool of knowledge and change. John and Andrew, the first two disciples who met Jesus, following that exceptional person, learned a different kind of knowledge and managed to change themselves and their reality. From that very first encounter, the method started to change in time and, and this is my own addition, has arrived to us from his life to our lives. And part of his, uh, this life is, uh, well, 
the event of the meeting in Rimini. And here I have to invite you all to look for the stations with the logo of the Red Heart and the writing Dona Ora. This is a symbol of the meeting. Without your contribution, uh, we wouldn't have uh, the possibility to organize the meeting. So donate, but please donate only at these desks, at these stations where you find the volunteers wearing the red T-shirt. There is uh, something new this year. The Meeting Foundation has now become a body of the third sector. Those who um, make donations to the meeting can enjoy a fiscal benefits in their financial statement. I would like to thank all our guests and all of you for uh, being here with us this afternoon. civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. Perché credo in quello che dico. Questo è basta? Sì. Don Giussani ha generato un popolo e io faccio parte di questo popolo. L'avvenimento in cui Dio entra nella nostra esistenza. Sospendo per un istante l'ora e guardo dalla parte da cui viene il grido. Così. Perché credo in quello che dico. Questo è basta? Sì. Don Giussani ha generato un popolo e io faccio parte di questo popolo. L'avvenimento in cui Dio entra nella nostra esistenza. Sospendo per un istante l'ora e guardo dalla parte da cui 